Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. 9 to 5 is a 1980 American comedy film that was directed by Colin Higgins with the screenplay written by Patricia Resnick. Whether you think it's a statement of female empowerment or simply a fun workplace comedy, the 1980 movie was a hit and it featured Jane Fonda, Lily Tomlin, and Dolly Parton as a trio of secretaries who turn the tables on their sexist, egotistical, lying, hypocritical boss, Dabney Coleman. The film is a true comedy classic. It was produced by Jane Fonda's production company, and the idea originated from a real-life organization. Fonda has always stated that a lot of her films usually come from things that she hears about or perceives in her daily life. A very good friend of hers had started an organization in Boston that was called 9 to 5, which was an association of women office workers. Fonda heard them talking about their work, and they had some great stories to tell. The other thing that led to the film was that she had always loved the 1940s films that had three female stars. Although the movie is ranked number four on the American Film Institute's list of 100 funniest American movies of all time, it didn't start out as a comedy at all. It was originally supposed to be a drama. They tried their best to do it that way, but every way they tried it, it seemed too preachy, with too much of a feminist line to it. Fonda had been wanting to work with Lily Tomlin for a long time, and it suddenly occurred to the producer, Bruce Gilbert, that they should make it into a comedy. As it turns out, it is a true labor film, but it's one that's somewhat of a new kind, different from The Grapes of Wrath or Salt of the Earth. They took a lot of the stuff out that they had already filmed at Fonda's request, even stuff that the director thought worked really well in the movie. Fonda was real insistent that she didn't want anything that seemed like you were on a soapbox or lecturing the audience. Just because a writer has a particular actor in mind when they're writing a script that doesn't mean he or she will end up being able to play that part. In fact, it's pretty much a rarity that that happens. But the screenwriter Resnick lucked out with 9 to 5. They initially had Jane already because it was her idea to do the film, and it was done by her production company. She wrote the parts for Dolly and Lily, but they didn't have them under contract at all but they really wanted them for these parts. But instead, they went ahead and set up some backup ideas just in case they turned down the roles. For Lily, it was Carol Burnett, and for Dolly, it was Anne Margaret. Though the role of Violet was written specifically for Tomlin, this legendary actress and comedian turned down the part when it was first offered to her. You see, at that time, she was shooting The Incredible Shrinking Woman, and she felt completely overworked and exhausted. She was convinced by her partner that if she didn't take this role, it would be one of the biggest mistakes of her life. Now she's extremely grateful that she took the job, and in doing so, she became really good friends with Jane Fonda. When the film premiered on December 19, 1980, Dolly Parton was already a major country music star, but she was a real Hollywood newcomer at that time. Everyone felt like this part was perfect for her because her music and the way she wrote songs made everybody think that she would probably be a good actor as well. In preparation for her role as Dora Lee, Dolly not only committed to memory her own part, but the parts of every other person in the film. She wasn't really sure how movies were made at all at that time. 
So when she got the script, she just assumed that she had to memorize every word of every character's part. So that's what she did. Once Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda found out about this, and the fact that Dolly thought that pictures were filmed in chronological order according to the film's script, they just burst out laughing. They figured that because she was in the entertainment business, she would know how it was done. But she was used to doing concerts and singing country western music and not making films. Dolly accepted this role with one condition, that she could write and sing the theme song of the movie, which went on to be nominated for an Academy Award and won two Grammys. Pardon recalls being told by Jane Fonda to slow down on what she was eating because filming was done out of sequence, and that means she'd be wearing the same costume later in the shoot. She recalls entering a scene one size and exiting it in a bigger. She states that she felt she looked like a fat canary in the shots where she's wearing the yellow outfit. When she first showed up with the title song that she had written, she played it on her fingernails, and she sang it completely a cappella, playing out the beat with just her nails. After impressing everybody, she stopped and stated that you've got to have falsies to do this, and then she added, and the nails have to be artificial as well. The reason she used her nails was that she felt like it gave her the rhythm and it sounded like a typewriter. In the final version of the song, you can hear her acrylic fingernails as part of the percussion section. Now one of the biggest assets that Dolly Parton has has to be considered her ample chest. When you say her name, that's immediately what you think of. But there's another hidden asset that she holds real close to her heart, and that's her shy and very reclusive husband, Carl Dean. He never appears in public with her, nor does he accompany her to any musical concerts or any other events. One of the few times that he's ever made an exception to this was during the filming of this movie. When he walked into the studio, Jane Fonda immediately noticed him and pointed him out across the room to Lily Tomlin. She stated, look at that handsome man. I call him, he's mine. After a few minutes of conversing together, Dolly broke the news that she was married to him, and she introduced him to the entire cast and the other actresses. When Jane found out that it was her husband that she was gawking at, she was extremely and deeply embarrassed. The movie grossed over $104 million, and it was a star vehicle for Dolly. Not only was she a popular singer, she was a popular actress that was on the A-list of Hollywood actors. Take a look at this classic from 1980. I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.